Hey what's happening guys, Chris here, and today I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at an absolute monster of a weapon called the Tankavir M1918. It's the strongest gun in Battlefield 1, more than capable of destroying vehicles and wiping infantry off the map with ease, providing you with tons of power and giving your enemies something to fear. So the Gewehr 98 was Germany's go-to rifle during the war. It was pretty effective against human beings, but not exactly against tanks and armour, which was designed to withstand small arms fire and protect the people inside from incoming shots. But Germany did have one particular weapon that could punch through those tin cans and create a bit of a problem for their enemies. The single shot bolt action tank of air model 1918, which was essentially a very similar gun to the Gewehr 98 from a mechanical point of view, but it was a hell of a lot beefier, being a much bigger, heavier and generally more powerful version of the standard infantry rifle. Instead of firing off that 8mm Mauser round, the tank of air was designed to accommodate a bloody huge cartridge in the form of the 13.2mm TUF bullet, which was a bit of a beast. The TUF, or TUF for abbreviation, stands for Tank and Flieger, or Tank and Aircraft in English, though I guess it's a fitting abbreviation considering the bullet is indeed very tough. These massive rounds generated a lot of recoil, and the only things the gun had to counter said recoil was a bipod and a chunky pistol grip, which would have given the user something to grasp onto for extra support when firing. Definitely something a gun of this scale would have really needed. But because of the sheer size of the tank of her, it often required a two-man crew to operate and carry, one guy to do all the shooting and the other to hold all the ammo. The rifle didn't have a sling or any easy way to move it around, so it would have been a bit of an awkward weapon to use on the battlefield but it was still very effective at doing what it was designed to do, which is the main thing that mattered at the end of the day. So during the early stages of the Great War, a lot of battles took place from within the confines of trenches, as leaving allied trenches would have made you a prime target for your enemies to shoot at from the trenches. This led to a lot of static combat zones that were often drawn to a stalemate, where neither side could really win the fight, and the trenches themselves actually became more dangerous than the enemy, being plagued with illness and disease. The Germans eventually used infiltration tactics to raid opposing trenches with shorter range weaponry, whereas the Brits and the French focused on building armoured vehicles to cover open ground and force their enemies back. As the war went on, the tactics and technology got better and better and by 1918, the British Mark IV tanks were roaming the battlegrounds and soaking up those 8mm Mauser bullets like they were nothing. The Germans had to come up with something quickly, a hard counter for those lumbering metal beasts, and so they basically got Mauser to amp up his Gewehr 98 design and create a giant heavy calibre high velocity anti-tank rifle in the form of the Tank Gewehr M 1918. This gun was more than capable of tearing through those tanks, being able to penetrate through 22mm of armoured plating so almost twice as much as the Mark IV tank's maximum armour thickness. The 13.2mm bullets would have blasted right the way through those tank walls and into anyone unfortunate enough to be standing behind them, like shooting fish in a barrel. You've got to remember that the tanks themselves weren't exactly very fast or mechanically reliable, so they were pretty easy targets to shoot at and German soldiers were trained to fire at areas that housed the tank crew members along with vital weak spots on the vehicle itself, such as the engine or the fuel container which often made it a successful weapon to defend against attacking armour. Now when I say this gun is powerful, I really mean it, because a gun designed to rip through 22mm of armoured plating is definitely going to put a soldier on the floor without any questions. It doesn't matter what part of the body your shot hits, you'll be inflicting enough damage to kill your target outright, with the tank of air dealing a maximum damage of 180 up to the range of 40 meters, which drops down to its minimum damage of 160 at 100 meters, making it the strongest bullet based weapon in Battlefield 1 by miles. One round is all you're going to need to ruin someone's day, and if that bullet hits them right in the head within a close to medium distance, you'll technically be dealing enough damage to kill a player three times over, with values reaching over 300. Let's just say that your enemy's head shouldn't really still be attached to their body after a shot like that, taking the word overkill to a whole new level. Alongside it pretty much deleting squishy infantry targets, it's very capable of destroying enemy vehicles like tanks, boats and planes by dealing some respectable amounts of damage towards those too. It depends on the angle of the shot and the strength of the vehicle itself to determine how much you'll be able to inflict as the heavier tanks are capable of withstanding a couple more bullets than the lighter ones, and you need to land your shot on a flat surface to deal as much damage as possible, though you'll typically be able to destroy most vehicles with a few well-placed hits, 
giving the Tank of Air a very impressive damage output towards both infantry and armour alike. You might be able to deal one-shot kills and wipe out huge chunks of vehicle health, but you won't be able to shoot very quickly at all, with the Tank of Air being an extremely slow-firing single-shot weapon. The gun only shoots at the speed of 20 RPM, which is even slower than the Martini Henry. Not by much, as the Martini Henry only fires 5 RPM faster, but still this basically puts more pressure on you to land as many shots as possible, as that slower pace will give your enemies more time to shoot back if you miss, making you a very vulnerable target. Because you'll be often using the Tank of Air against tanks and other potentially dangerous vehicles that are capable of blowing you sky high, this sluggish fire rate can often get you killed if your enemy realises where you are. Taking on a vehicle that's already damaged or one that's under fire and distracted by assault players is usually the best way to go. Though you can destroy a heavily armoured tank single-handedly if you play smart and switch positions, or hide whilst ready in your next shot, which I'd definitely advise doing if you want to survive. With the Tank of Air kind of acting like an overpowered infantry rifle, this gives it a pretty similar muzzle velocity to the scout weapons, with it having a bullet speed of 780 meters per second. Considering your rounds have got loads of power behind them, this velocity isn't exactly all that high, just being slightly quicker than the Type 38 Arasaka. It's not slow, but you'll still have to lead your target's movements if they're far away, and this makes it a bit harder to land shots on players running in unpredictable patterns, or on those fast-moving attack planes buzzing around in the air somewhat restricting its long-ranged effectiveness and balancing things out so it's not too OP against everyone at all ranges. Firing the tank of air is like firing a bloody cannon, and as you could probably expect, blasting out those high-caliber rounds causes the rifle to kick like crazy whenever you pull down the trigger. It's got the highest vertical recoil in the game with a value of 30, which is actually three times higher than the Martini Henry's upwards kick, though the gun's horizontal recoil is set at a value of 2, so twice as much as all the scouts' bolt-action rifles. These are some pretty intense figures, and even though you'll be using a bipod to help reduce the recoil and make the gun more stable, it's still going to jolt upwards a hell of a lot after each shot, which might block your vision a bit and make it temporarily harder to see enemies that might be planning on shooting back. Of course, these ridiculous recoil values don't really matter too much, because of the fact that you'll need to manually chamber another bullet after each shot anyway, so there's plenty of time for your gun sights to reset back to their original position as you reload. And because the tank of air can only really be used while stationary, when that bipod's stuck in the ground or a nearby ledge, this basically eliminates the weapon's hipfire capabilities and those spread stats whilst moving around, making them all a bit irrelevant. And the gun's recoil as a whole isn't really going to impact its usability as you play, just make sure you line up those shots properly before you squeeze the trigger. Now the Tank of Air M1918, being a single shot rifle, only holds a single shot, which in comparison to everything else in the game it is not very much. The gun's got the same ammo capacity as the Martini Henry, so you might want to use it in a similar way to how you'd use the Martini, popping in and out of cover to chamber your next round, or whilst protecting yourself from incoming fire. As although the Tank Hunter kit gives you a bit more health than the average foot soldier, roughly soaking up an extra 65% of damage, you've still got nowhere near as much armour as the likes of the Villa Perosa wielding sentries, so a couple of well-placed cable at headshots will be enough to bring you down and end your reign of terror before you even know about it. With the Tank of Air firing and reloading at such a sluggish pace, this makes you a very vulnerable target in between shots, as it's going to take 3 whole seconds to ready up your next bullet for firing, which is plenty of time for a Mark IV tank to blast you into oblivion. Although you'll be able to drop targets very easily, if you're outnumbered or come under fire with no nearby cover to slump behind for protection, you'll be at a major disadvantage, with the Tank of Air not being able to deal with multiple enemies at a time very well. For this reason, it can often be best playing slightly further back from all the chaos, picking off individual players and vehicles from a safe distance, and generally playing with a passive mindset in order to survive. But anyway, in conclusion, the Tank of Air M1918 is the weapon to use if you really want to kill someone. It's the strongest rifle in the game that can take down an opponent with just one bullet over all ranges, but it comes with the trade-off of being slow to operate, firing just one round at a time and requiring reloads in between shots. 
so in a way it's a bit like a Martini Henry on steroids. Although it's got a ridiculous amount of power, it's still most effective when used to support your allies from a fair distance, away from all the danger, and with it functioning in a similar way to the scout weapons, you'll often be best using the rifle as a defensive means to take down oncoming enemies and destroy attacking vehicles that have been a bit of a nuisance to your team. Despite it acting in a similar way to a long range scout weapon, it's still not exactly the most reliable thing to use over those further distances. As you'll be limited to using shorter ranged iron sights, you might need to lead targets movements far away if they're strafing around, and you can only actually use the gun from a stationary position whilst that bipod's been deployed. The fact that you need to perform a 3 second reload after each shot gives the gun an extremely slow rate of fire, and if you get caught out by a flanking squad of enemies, or you happen to miss a shot on an opposing sniper, then you'll be left in a bit of a vulnerable position, forcing you to retreat to cover or suffer the consequences. So although the tank of air is one of the most punishing weapons in the game, it does have quite a few limitations surrounding its general usability, restricting its effectiveness and basically making it a less reliable gun than the average Battlefield 1 weapon. So long as you focus fire on enemy vehicles, pick off individual soldiers and try and use the gun from a safe distance to all the chaos up on the front lines, then the tank of air will be able to assist your team in a pretty big way. It might not be the most dependable thing to have equipped, acting more like a portable cannon than a bolt action rifle, though it's definitely ferocious enough to cause some serious damage. And once you've found a good spot to cover your team, you'll be able to unleash the power of the tank of air on your enemies and strike them down with tremendous force. So that's all I've got for you this time guys, hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two. Give me a like if you did, and subscribe for loads more Battlefield content and other stuff coming out in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next episode.